Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the albedo of planet Earth. More specifically, the recent study that discovered the albedo of our planet has actually dropped in the last few decades. But what exactly is albedo, and what does this all mean for our planet? So let's discuss these concepts in more detail, starting with albedo. In the nutshell, albedo just means reflectivity, how much light is reflected from a certain object. The word itself stems from Latin and it means whiteness. And scientifically speaking, it essentially measures the amount of solar radiation reflected from an object and it's measured on a scale from 0 to 1. With 0 being something extremely dark and something that doesn't reflect anything, and we've actually discovered at least one planet out there that seems to have albedo of about 0 0.02, the darkest planet ever discovered. The planet known as Tress 2b, and it potentially looks something like this. And we also have some really reflective objects here in the solar system, with for example Enceladus, the moon of Saturn, being one of the most reflective bodies known to us. Here the reflectivity is about 0.9. But albedo itself is a really complex concept and it's also not constant. For example, for planet Earth, it changes quite a lot depending on the atmospheric conditions and also depending on the weather effects and a lot of other conditions that are usually very difficult to predict. For example, here are the calculations for the albedo during the completely clear skies, whereas here is what it looks like when you have a lot of clouds and a lot of different weather phenomena that could potentially increase the albedo quite a lot. So for example, things like some of the clouds in the upper atmosphere and things like snow will have very, very high albedo, whereas things like ocean water or things like asphalt will have an extremely low albedo and will actually absorb a lot of light. Nevertheless, on average, the albedo of planet Earth is anywhere from 0.3 to sometimes 0.35, and it usually varies because of the cloud cover and because of various atmospheric conditions. But something really interesting came out of this paper that was only published a few weeks ago. Here the scientists used an extremely interesting technique to study albedo of our planet and discovered something intriguing and something a little bit disturbing. They discovered that on average in the last couple of decades, the average albedo of our planet has dropped by about 0.5%, equivalent to approximately half a watt of radiation per square meter which suggests that in the last couple of decades, our planet started to absorb more energy than reflect into outer space. But before I talk about the potential implications and what all of this means, let's talk about the more interesting part first. How exactly did they measure all of this? I mean, how do you measure the total reflectivity of the entire planet and combine the effects of the reflectivity for the past few decades? Well, there's a really, really interesting technique and it's called planet shine, also known as earth shine. And here's how this works. You might have seen this picture before. This is the picture taken by the Cassini mission, and it's a picture of Saturn's rings. They're shining. They're producing what's known as the ring shine. And this ring shine then reflects onto the atmosphere of Saturn and is actually visible in the picture itself. Here's another interesting example of a different type of white planet shine. This right here is Saturn shine. This tiny patch of light you see right here, that's produced by the reflection of light from Saturn itself with this here being produced by the sun. And so this idea of planet shine or ring shine or blank shine has been known to us for a very, very long time. It's basically when an object reflects the light from the sun and that light then strikes another object, creating some sort of a bright patch on the surface. And well, naturally something similar happens with planet Earth and our moon. This sketch right here was created by Leonardo da Vinci back in the 16th century. And even back then, the early astronomers realized that our moon was shining on two sides. Today this is referred to as the Earth shine, and it's something that's usually visible when you see moon forming the crescent, and then you also see the dark part of the moon being slightly brighter than it should be. We can even try to simulate the effects of Earth shine by using Space Engine. And so here if we look at the moon, this is obviously the far side, with the near side being almost entirely dark to us. If I start increasing the albedo effects from planet Earth, you'll notice how the moon sort of starts getting brighter. Let's try this again. So here the albedo is very low, here the albedo is very high. And so notice how the Earth shine changes the luminosity coming from the dark side of the moon. And so hypothetically we can actually measure the amount of light coming from the dark side of the moon and thus measure the so-called Earth shine or the reflectivity from planet Earth. 
Which is pretty much exactly how for the past few decades the scientists have been measuring the total albedo of planet Earth. They've essentially measured it by measuring the amount of light reflected from the dark side of the moon. And to make sure that these results were not some sort of a fluke, the scientists in this paper used the data from two completely different methods of observation. So the data that you see in black here is from what's known as the Big Bear Solar Observatory, also known as BBSO. This particular observatory has been running a project known as Project Earthshine for the past few decades. You can learn more about this from one of the links in the description below. And then they combined this with the results from the mission, from the NASA mission, known as CERES. CERES stands for Clouds and Earth's Radiant Energy System and is essentially an instrument attached to several satellites that tries to measure the total reflectivity of clouds combining it into an annual distribution of reflectivity across the entire planet. And so the data from blue here, that's the data from Ceres from the satellites measuring the reflection from the clouds. And while both the Earthshine and the cloud reflectivity seems to suggest that the total reflectivity or total albedo of planet Earth has decreased by about half a percent in the last two decades, with the total reflectivity from the clouds being affected a lot more. And although naturally one of the assumptions here could be maybe the sun has decreased in luminosity because of some sort of a cycle, the study did not find any correlation between the changes in the terrestrial albedo and the solar activity. So it definitely does not seem to be the sun itself. Something on earth is changing, causing the total albedo to decrease over time. And so all of this to some extent suggests that maybe it's because of some sort of a climatic changes on the planet. Now this is really intriguing because in some of the previous studies, some scientists have suggested that because of the climate change, we might actually experience more clouds because as the water evaporates from the oceans, it will produce more clouds which will then increase the albedo of the planet. But this study seems to suggest the opposite. Even though the warming of the planet and the albedo effects are more or less correlated, the warming of the oceans did not increase the albedo. The reflectivity of the planet instead decreased by just a tiny amount, more or less correlated with the average temperatures of the oceans. Although in this case, it would be really difficult to find the actual cause of the decrease of albedo. For example, one potential explanation here could be because of some sort of pollutant that's present in the atmosphere. Generally speaking, certain elements in the atmosphere, specifically certain chemicals, can hypothetically either increase or decrease reflections from the planet. And so for all we know, maybe some of these changes are actually because of the pollution. But the measurements from various NASA satellites, such as the Aqua satellite you see right here, the satellite that does have one of these serious instruments on board that measure the reflections from the cloud, nevertheless also suggests that the reflectivity from the clouds decreased by just a little bit. And so the combination of the increase in greenhouse gases and the overall decrease in albedo unfortunately have a somewhat bad effect on our planet. They start increasing the temperature on the planet by a lot more than it would increase otherwise. But despite these observations, it's still very early to tell exactly what's happening here. For all we know, the actual cause could be entirely different from what we currently think. And because of this, the scientists in this paper encourage more analysis and more observations trying to figure out if the albedo is truly decreasing and if so, what exactly is causing it. And so hopefully the observations in the next few years will help us establish what's really happening here and what exactly is happening to our planet or more importantly what's going to happen to our planet in the next few decades. Although I guess the most disappointing discovery from this particular study is really the effect in regards to clouds. Even though some scientists were kind of hoping that the increase in temperature will produce more clouds and thus increase albedo, the results from this study definitively tell us that the albedo seems to be decreasing as the temperature increases as well. And that just makes things a little bit worse for us, or at least a little bit more difficult to deal with when it comes to the climate change on planet Earth. Now we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos and once new studies come out, but I guess until then, well, this is something else to kind of be aware of. Our planet seems to be reflecting a little bit less light and thus absorbing a little bit more light, approximately half a percent more than it used to a couple of decades ago. Now, until future studies or until we learn something else, 
subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and don't forget to check out all of the links in the description below. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.